Hi guys, my name is Becky. Welcome back to our channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season. Now, looking back over the year, we have done a ton of really big makeovers. I've had some personal wins and I've had some fails. So that's why today I wanna take it back. I wanna do just a simple, well, it's never simple when it's with me. <laughs> I wanna do one DIY project with you together that I've been wanting to do for so long. And I think now is the perfect time. Welcome back to the series where I challenge myself to use thrifted materials and a love of all things retro to DIY our family home from this farmhouse to that 70s house. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you might remember this fireplace makeover I did in my previous home. And if you don't remember that video, it's maybe because you weren't subscribed and now is the absolute perfect time to do it. It's Boxing Day. The subscription is on for 100% off. It's free today and I would appreciate it so much. <laughs> now when I moved, I had to totally take apart that fireplace, but of course I kept the actual fireplace itself and I brought it with me to this home. And literally ever since, it's just been sitting in this corner in our bedroom looking so sad and lonely and I just really want to fix that today. So if there's two things to know about me, it's that I love a good DIY challenge and I love all things mid-century inspired. So let's combine those and DIY myself a stone fireplace. I, I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but it sounds really nice. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so this one's a little tricky for me to visualize because it's in a corner. I know what I want it to look like, but I don't really know how we're gonna get there. So this is just gonna be a little build together and figure it out moment. So what I'm going to start with is just taking some measurements of this corner. I have some two by fours out in the driveway and I really think my best bet is to just start cutting them up, bringing them in here and seeing where we can place them to start building a solid frame. Do not judge me for the amount of dust we find behind here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna sweep that because I'm about to make it dustier. These baseboards will need to go for now, I think. Okay. Luckily, I can be pretty flexible with where I put these pieces, so I know there's a stud here, and I know there's a stud here, and that's where I'm gonna put these supports to start. And I'm just using these big three inch wood screws. These are the most secure things when working with two by fours. Especially, again, this is all gonna be hidden. It's structural, I just want it to be strong. No going back now. Okay, now this is where things get a little funky and I'm not an expert here, but this piece that's gonna be the front wall of the fireplace is going to have to be cut on a bit of a funny angle so that the front sheet can lay flat. I wish I wasn't dealing with a corner for this entire project, but I do think it's gonna look great in the end. So I wanna show you one of the best tools that I have ever purchased, and it was only a few dollars. So I don't know what you would call this other than just fancy protractor, but basically you can put whatever your angle is kind of in this little crux here, and then tighten this, and it will tell you exactly what angle you're working with. This is adjustable, of course. So I think, to practice here, I know we've got to slice a bit off this wood and it's kind of going to be an angle like this, but I don't really know what that angle is and I don't want to guess because that just sounds like I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> so I would place this on the flat wall and then this I'm going to line up with where I've just marked with tape where I think my ideal line wants to go and then I will tighten this. And now we know that it is a, oh boy. 63 and now I know I've got to slice the uh, edge off my wood at a 63 degree angle is it gonna be that easy probably not but at least starting off with the right answer here is gonna put me in the right direction I hope something like that look right if it were to be cut this way yes it does okay feeling good feeling good Oh, 
it's always so satisfying when that works. Because when you're me, you just never know. Oh gosh. Oh no. We got part of the pool table. You always hope for the best. A little bit. This is $40. Oh no. Jupiter. <laughs> but you're never quite sure. Okay, now to cover this, I'm gonna be using just some half inch plywood to go over the front here. And you can get the really ugly, inexpensive plywood that's not smooth at all because if you're like me, we're gonna cover it later and make it beautiful. So it's okay to go with this stuff because it's like half the price of the nicely finished wood. So I'll do one there, one there, here, and then we're gonna have to figure out a top piece as well. If you can wood glue and nail something at the same time, that's gonna last you for life, probably. Yes, that's really cool. Oh my gosh. Take your time and be slow and intentional about things. That's the key to success. Okay. I'm heading out now because I found someone who's selling a few boxes of a product called brick veneer or stone veneer. And basically what it is, is like something that looks like a stone or a brick, but it's sliced in half. And it's not nearly as thick as a traditional brick would be. And you can glue it to the wall just like you would regular tile, but it's gonna give the illusion of having a full on stoned or brick wall. I think, I'm really hoping, because I'm excited by this. I did I did not know how we were gonna get the stone look, because I'm not a, a mason. I don't know how to do masonry work. Is that much different than tiling? I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna find out, okay? <laughs> and it was a super good price too, so it's all looking good. Okay, here is what I picked up. The brick, or the, I don't think it's real brick. I think it's concrete that's been poured into a mold to look like brick. Think. So it's perfectly flat on the one side and then looks like brick on the front. And each piece is a little different, so this is gonna be a really fun puzzle to figure out how we're gonna make it fit on the fireplace. So I wasn't sure if attaching the brick veneer required a special method that I hadn't tried before, so I did some research. And I'm gonna go ahead with mixing up some basic type N mortar from the hardware store and applying it to the front of the fireplace. I don't know if I really know what I'm doing. Oh boy. Okay, off to a good start. I then needed to texturize the mortar by adding some scratch lines to it before it dries. I went and added more water to the mix and it's definitely sticking better now, which is good. And I think I'm just gonna do the scratch lines with the edge of this because I'm finding that this kind of pattern is just taking away too much of this. We're gonna go. We're gonna go with this and see what happens. This should help create a grippy base for the stones to stick to later. Okay. While that dries, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> so what I've done is traced out the shape of the front of the fireplace on the floor here because I need to make sure that all these bricks are gonna fit. And I feel like I'm gonna have to cut a lot of them because they're a little bigger than I thought they would be. But that's the joys of shopping secondhand. You never know what you're gonna get sometimes. <laughs> so really the only one that I think I know for sure is the single long piece that the seller gave me which could go right here. Although now I'm wondering if that's gonna feel too different from the rest. But let's see what we can do with what we have. Okay, okay. That fits nicely. I think I'll be fine, but I'm definitely gonna have to start chopping some of my larger ones into smaller bits to go on the sides, so let's take this outside. Okay, 
This thing is called a cold chisel and I got it from the hardware store for just a couple bucks and it's supposed to be able to split brick, no problem, but we're gonna put that to the test right now. Pretty good. Yes! This is exactly the cut that I needed. You guys don't know how history channel I feel right now doing this. Oh, the pyramid's next? <laughs> you got it. It's such an old timey feeling, like chiseling away, you know? Oh, that's satisfying. Perfect! Okay, I'm actually feeling so good about this. This is looking amazing. And I know that you guys are all gonna say this top should be a little thicker, but do not worry, shh, don't worry, because <laughs> I have a plan and it's, I think it's gonna look good. I think it's gonna look good. Now we gotta see if these are gonna stick. Okay, got all the bricks in the order I want them. And then over here, mixed up another batch of the mortar and now we're gonna stick them in i'm really nervous that it's not gonna work you can either believe me <laughs> or not believe me i'm not gonna put that energy out there though it's gonna work perfectly they say it's supposed to stick at 90 degrees it's not I feel like a proper brick person I don't know about this one, Tony. Like... Did it come off the plywood? I think so. Maybe you want to cut the camera? That is <laughs> <laughs> such a fail. That ain't gonna work. Ain't no way that was ever gonna work. That's cut the so camera. annoying! Cut the camera, hold on. Ugh. Such a mess. Oh my goodness. Well, at least it's easy to undo. That was hours of work. <laughs> we need to get the cement board. I wish we had found this out before making a new batch. This is where you play that sad song. <laughs> So obviously that first attempt did not work. I have a couple guesses as to why, but I don't know for sure. So instead I've just spent the whole day doing more research and I have a new plan that I'm hoping is going to work better. So I picked up a product called Cement Board, which has texture built into it already. So we don't need the scratch coat. It's gonna provide the grip that we need in theory. So I'll be cutting that down to the shape of the front of the fireplace and just screwing that onto the wooden frame that's already there. This is great because I don't need to redo anything. I just need to cover up what's already been started. And then instead of using that same mortar mix that I was using before, which might have been part of the problem, I picked up something new. This is a new mortar mix that is polymer fortified, which basically means it has a fancy extra ingredient to up the stickiness factor, which is what we need. We need it to stick to bricks. We're gonna try this again. Oh yeah, it's way stickier. Sticky stuff, right? Look at that stick. This is like uh, the DQ Blizzard when they turn it upside down and then the blizzard doesn't fall out. You know, it's quality blizzard. You know, they have to do that. You have to do it. Okay. Is it sticky? Pretty sticky. Oh, I think that's good. Yay! Okay. The next piece? Yeah. Let's just keep going. No more slowing down. One does not simply run out of more door. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Last piece.
It looks great, Beam Beam. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. It's grout time. When I tell you guys I am so ready to be done mixing things in buckets and dealing with the freezing cold outside. Oh! We are so close. Grout is the final step until we can move on to other parts of this project. They're a little more fun. Also the fact that this project is going on like two feet from my bed and it's a disaster zone right now. I really wanna get this done tonight so I can clean up the area. <laughs> This grout process is gonna be a little different than anything I've done before with tile because I'm not smearing it on and then wiping it off with a sponge, which is the normal method. I'm gonna be using a piping bag essentially and putting it into the cracks and leaving it, which I don't know if that's gonna make it easier or harder, but it's gonna be less messy, I think, because the watery part of the grout process is always the worst. So to do that, I'm just gonna be using a simple bag like this, nothing fancy. Put some grout in here, snip a little bit off the end and use that as kind of my homemade piping bag. Okay, this is looking good. Also, please don't think badly of me for owning Ziploc bags like these. We were gifted a box of these, like I swear it's been almost two years now because we so very rarely use them. But for times like this, kind of not mad that we have this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's going. And then I don't know if this is right, but I'm kind of just pushing it in with my finger to uh, get it farther in there. Kind of gross, but kind of satisfying all at the same time. Okay, this is going, but slowly. So I'll catch up with you when I'm farther along the way. So ignore the mess of cords at the top there. I am gonna disguise those better when we get further along, but it's fully dried and I think it's looking so good. Adding the grout into the bricks made all the difference and just making it feel like a complete real piece of brick wall. And don't trust the color of your grout when it's wet because this dried so much lighter, but that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be basically undetectable. I wanted the brick to be the standout item and not all the lines in between. And I think the finished color is just, it's perfect, it's perfect. So I know I still need to sort out the top, but I have been dying to put the fireplace back in there and see how it looks and honestly just make sure that it still fits. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's just do it. It is perfect, like a perfect fit. And that doesn't always happen, right? Oh, it's cute, it's really cute. So this brick stone was 100% the right choice for that mid-century feel, but now seeing it on its own, it is leaning perhaps a little organic, a little even English cottage. So to nail that mid-century modern inspired feel, I think what we need is a nice sharp angular mantelpiece in a deep warm tone wood. So what this mantle needs to do is essentially work as a nice front piece that can cover this gap at the top here that I left and also cover the entire top of this because I left it all unfinished. So I'm imagining one really large top piece that extends past the stone and goes down a little bit to kind of make that shelf mantle feel. I'm seeing it in my head how I'm gonna execute I don't know until I get into the garage and start cutting up some wood. For the top piece, I'm using a new sheet of the nicer quality plywood cut into a triangle that fits perfectly into this corner. I made sure to extend it a few inches past the stone front so I can add a trim piece for the mantle. I'm attaching some square pieces to the underside. These will act as added support for the front piece. Then I've got my nice front piece of wood cut to size and I'm nail gunning it into those block supports. This nail gun uses really tiny nails which should be undetectable once the wood is stained. Thank you, appreciate you. I'm gonna start making tacos. Tacos. You like tacos? But it's Wednesday. 
This is the exact product that I used to stain this countertop behind me. There's a whole video on this coffee bar makeover. It looked very different, like a terrible closet before that. But anyways, it's a Danish oil, which is slightly different from a stain. It's kind of an all-in-one product and it soaks deeper into the wood instead of sitting on top and it hardens inside of the wood. So many different benefits. It didn't go that dark back there because that's bamboo and bamboo is a very dense wood. It doesn't soak in that much, but the wood that I used for the front is a softer wood and then the plywood that I used for the top is a different kind of softer wood. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can use this because I own it already and I'm more so hoping that this matches the way the plywood is gonna stain. So I'm gonna test them both right now because I don't know and I don't wanna start until I'm sure that it's gonna look okay. Oh, we have a little sleeping Dan down here. Okay, results are in. This is the plywood and this is the other piece of wood and I think they match fine enough. This is looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead with that Danish oil on the whole top and the front. I woke up this morning and realized two things. One, I love how the color turns out. It's beautiful. But two, I don't love the way that it dried. Maybe you can see a difference on this side. It's just, it's so matte that I think it's kind of losing its beauty. So, unfortunately, I'm going in with a top coat of lacquer. I'm only saying unfortunately just because it's literally more work. <laughs> Not because it's like the wrong thing to do or anything. And I'm just so close to the finish line and I'm, I'm ready. I also didn't screw this in place for this exact purpose because if I can pull it out from underneath the TV, it is so much easier to access for this purpose. But once it's done, I will secure it in place. It is looking so good. I cannot wait to just put a few extra final touches on it, style it all and show it to you. But there is one last step I wanna do. And that involves some strip lights. I wanna stick these to the back of the TV. Because it's in a quarter, I've got some good space behind it to light up that area. And fun fact, adding lighting to behind your TV, often called bias lighting, really reduces the strain on your eyes if you're looking at a TV in a dark area. I've also heard it just makes the overall viewing experience of a TV better if you have some additional lighting. So we're gonna do it. I just think it's gonna enhance the vibes, you know? The way that that meets up so perfectly, and I 100% just guessed, is fantastic. So there's still some cords in the very back that you can still see, so I'm just gonna take this bucket that I thrifted recently and literally just put it back there to hide all the cords. I think it'll blend in enough. So here it is, my fully transformed mid-century modern inspired electric fireplace. I cannot wait to spend the rest of my holiday season cozied up by the new fireplace, enjoying a warm cup of cocoa, and honestly, probably just a lot of Netflix. I hope you're all having an amazing holiday and I can't wait to see you guys back in the new year with a ton of new DIY projects and room makeovers. I'm looking forward to tackling some new spaces in my home as well as getting back to that bathroom makeover I have not forgotten. It is it is being worked on behind the scenes. So we'll talk more about that in the new year. All right, thanks for joining me. If you liked it, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. We have slowly been making our way through bigger and bigger makeovers in this new house. And today it is time for taking on the biggest one yet. Go in there. I don't want to step in there. Oh. I cannot believe we found carpet under there yesterday. That's gotta come out. I am most excited to hear from you because you've done a bathroom. 